We are back. Sheffield Shuffler, Lost in the Shuffle podcast. We're back with Tim and Mitchell. What's up, boys? How you doing? What's up? Riveting as always. Mitchell, did you just get back from the game or what? Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. How'd it go? It was a loser, but man, it was so hot out. Yeah. Different parts of the country, but the flags weren't moving at all. And it was like 85 and it was just like, you know, I don't know. I felt like I was sitting on like some total recall shit or something. Sweltering heat. No wind or anything, just heat. Yeah. And you're just stuck and you can't move. Bauer was soaked. Took off his jersey and it was completely wet. So if a baby's soaked, that means it's pretty damn hot. Yeah, definitely. Keep that baby nice and cool. (laughs) Yeah, he was in the air conditioning for five innings too. (laughs) You should have saw my baby. He was dying. (laughs) (laughs) In the nursery room or whatever. Yeah, the nursery room. That's nice that they got that. Well, you hit uh, one out of the two of your bets, right? You said uh, you were going to take money line four. White Sox that didn't hit your Bauer, your son lost his first game nine and one. That's a pretty good run for your I'm, first uh, first 10 baseball games, huh? I'm 15 and five. You're 15 and five. Um, Eloy did get a hit, so you were right on that. And then what else happened in the second inning? Oh, we're on the Jumbotron. Jumbotron, yeah. Camera always finds Bauer. Yeah, definitely. Cute little boy. Well, that's cool. It sounds like fun. Um, Tim, h- how are you doing? Doing good, man. Another yeah. week closer to the NFL start of the season. So, Absolutely. I know. I wanted to uh, get this podcast in today um, because, you know, I want to stay consistent and, you know, start making sure that I'm doing this more often. And then I really like that we uh, kind of do that hard knocks breakdown because I think a lot of people watch that show and there's a lot to be covered for that. But if I wasn't going to do this today, Patriots Eagles are playing at the link down the field. And that would have been perfect opportunity for some content. Why didn't you go? Cause we're doing this. Go after. I just explained that for like five minutes. <laughs> Post game reaction. I know. I said, if we weren't doing this because I want to be consistent, all that stuff, do you not? I just said that. Maybe four hours? Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, Are you going to get out to the link this year? Yeah. we're. Uh, my uh, father-in-law got uh, me tickets for my birthday, October 3rd, playing your Chiefs, Tim. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I, thought, nice. I thought we told you that, right? If you guys come out... Um, yeah, we're going to go to the game. You would just get ticks, but that would be a fun weekend if you guys came. Um, but yeah, they're playing October 3rd, a Sunday. So I'm going to go have a day like Bradley Cooper, um, and go see the birds play just like the movie. Yeah. I mean, I think there's worse places we could be received than Philadelphia. People like Andy Reid up there still. Well, the thing too, was when I went to go see the bears, uh, the bears and the Eagles, when they were here, Bears, like, they don't care about the Bears fans. As long as you're not a Dallas Cowboys fan or a Giants fan, they don't give a shit. They're like, oh, you're cool. And we're getting our asses kicked. I'm like, and I'm not that asshole where I'm like, oh, yeah, Elshon Jeffrey, you know, when it, when they, when he was playing. But, um, yeah, they didn't give a shit. If they're not in your division or a rival, they really don't care. That's how it should be. Right? Like. There's no reason to get beef with just random fans. I know that I went to a Patriots Chiefs game and it was really contentious. And I was just like, get your asses back to Boston. Yeah. I know everybody hates Boston. That's why I thought it'd been good to be there today to, uh, you know, see, see how well uh, Patriots uh, traveled. How was, how was the, uh, the sell today, Mitch? Any nonsense going on? No, there's no nonsense. All right. <laughs> it was, uh, no, it was 24,000, I think. Um, no, it's usually no nonsense until it's like, you know, a sellout on the weekends where people could drink all afternoon and then go to a night game. Right. Like, no nonsense Yankees until series. Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. The Yankees series was nuts. Yeah. And it's come to town next weekend, so that'll probably be rowdy too, I'm sure. The Yankees are coming to town next weekend, you said? Cubs. Oh, the Cubs. Oh, boy. All right. Well, we'll get started here. First thing I saw was, uh, I know this has been like a couple days old, maybe even a week old, but this uh, girl, Brittany Renner, she is a 
Instagram, social media, celebrity, not really a celebrity, but you know, she's got a big following on social media and Tim. So she met PJ. What is it? PJ Williams. PJ Washington, Washington. She met him at Kentucky. I'm sorry. I, he, when he was playing at Kentucky is when she, she was going to his games and put her hooks and, into him. Right. And he was 18, maybe even like 17 at the time. He was very young. Mm -hmm. And she's a good amount older than he is. Right. Yeah. I think she's close to a decade older than him. Yeah. So they end up getting it together, getting together. They have a baby and now she is like holding the baby against him and won't let him see the baby. And she was awarded $200,000 a month in, is it alimony payments or? Uh, I think it's child support child is what support. it technically is. But yeah. I mean, how much money of that is actually going to go to the child? Right. $200,000 a month. That's ridiculous. And the most disgusting thing was, there was a video that came out. She's this, she probably recorded it maybe like a year or something ago, but she's in her car doing a, you know, just recording. And she's like, Oh, athletes are so dumb. They don't even wear condoms. If you want to get a bag, fuck an athlete. She's basically just telling everybody, Hey, if you want to get money, get pregnant by an athlete and you can get whatever you want. I mean, there's definitely some truth to that. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, absolutely. But still like how fucking terrible of a person are you to like that is your goal that is like your mission to ruin somebody's and then hold the baby it's like you're not trying to have a happy life you're trying to get money and screw over everybody else do you think that guy's gonna have two hundred thousand dollars every month for the next 18 years what does that come out to 47 million dollars you better get better, better yeah get better. i mean He's he's still on his rookie deal, but I'm pretty sure that was worth like 12 or 13 because he was a lottery pick. Mm -hmm. Six years. And maybe? I mean, NBA bags are crazy, man. Not Terry Rozier just signed like a 97 million dollar extension. He's not even that good. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I well, only got two million. I'm sorry. I would assume we only got like two million for the Bulls. Well, there's reason for that. I don't think anyone's trying to get him. Uh, get knocked up by him. Right. I don't know how much his contract was, but that's a lot of fucking money. And you're a terrible piece of shit. If that's your plan in life to get pregnant by athletes and then screw them over and then keep their child from them. So fuck that bitch. Right. Incredibly unethical. I mean, that kid worked his ass off to be able to get to that level, goes to the university of Kentucky, which is, you know, NBA machine gets drafted in the lottery. And now he's basically been over the barrel for, 18 more years by an Instagram model. Yeah. And she's not even letting him see the baby and stuff. Right. Wouldn't that be terrible, Mitchell, if you couldn't see Bauer? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Joke there. I'm just looking up. Uh, you sound AK distraught. Washington salary. You sound distraught. Good thing. He's only 23. He's got time to develop, to pay off that uh, baby mama is. Well, that's 18 Thank years. You. He also got to think too. He's got to be a hell of a lot smarter than that too. So, right, both sides. You got to know what you're getting into. For sure, but I mean, if she's coming in when he's 18 years old and manipulating him and stuff like that, like you're, you're not even close to being a man at that age yet. Yeah, he, I don't know. His dad should have told him, "Keep your dick in your pants. Go on the court." <laughs> well, well <laughs> a big contract. Maybe his mom should have told him. Right. Um, so yeah, that's that. Fuck that bitch. And it makes me harder to, I mean, sometimes never, never mind. I was going to say, sometimes it makes it harder to believe women when they say shit like that, because there's so many, uh, deceptive and, uh, like heinous women out there with a, a, an agenda. You know what I mean? So when they, some women will claim things that will happen, it makes you second guess when you see shit like that, you're like, well, are you just after fucking money? Like these other ones? I mean, yeah, that's kind of how I always felt whenever I'd go out to the bars and see athletes there and chicks are just flocking to them. It's just like, you're, you're just going after something. Right. It's like how I feel at the bars before I was married. They're walking slot machines, man. Slot machines, walking slot machines. Hey, did you, 
Did you guys see uh, Ric Flair topping off that chick on a train? Hell yeah. <laughs> he don't ride trains. Ric Flair was accused of pleasuring a woman orally on a train. Uh, and then he tweeted, he was like, Woo, Ric Flair don't ride trains. And I thought that was maybe a double entendre that he's not into trains and he doesn't ride trains. I mean, let's be honest, Ric Flair probably does ride trains. Yeah, and participates in them as well. Uh, that day he was. So he said it wasn't him. I did you see the picture? Oh yeah. Yeah. How bad? I mean, it wasn't not Ric Flair. Right, right. It wasn't not him. Yeah. Slick back, white hair. Yeah. I was like, wow. I mean, if you told me it was, I would believe it, right? I mean, the only other person that could have been was Joe Biden with that haircut. So <laughs> yeah. sleepy, sleepy Joe. Um, so did you guys see Draymond Green and KD had a interview the other day where they sat down and talked about their feelings? Yeah, they had a nice little powwow, kumbaya. Each one got to hold the feeling stick. Why didn't why why didn't you want to stay in the team? Did you why did you hurt my feelings? That kind of stuff, right? Pretty much, and, and it, it kind of you know they delved into the ownership problems and some other stuff. That's why KD said he wanted out. But I mean, realistically, all of these guys at that level jumped from super team to super team. That's why I thought it was funny that it was Draymond. That was talking about it because, I mean, he's never been close to being the guy on any of the teams he's been on. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he holds that much leverage in one of those conversations was pretty insightful. Kevin well, Durant makes sense. He's one of the faces of basketball. Draymond Green's like the third best guy on his team. But who else would have done that? I don't think Steph Curry's going to do that, right? I don't think Steph Curry cares. Right. Clay Thompson. Steve yeah, no, Kerr, <laughs> they're not going to sit down, right? Right. And, you know, I, I'm sure that they hashed out a lot of feelings. They're on the Olympic team together, so they were probably hanging out a lot, talking about this. Hey, maybe this would be something that would get us some nice buzz in the offseason, get people talking about us. Right. One of those situations. So I really didn't care too much about what they had to say just because I don't give a shit. But I want to know from you guys. Mitchell, you still there with us? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Um, who do you guys want to see sit down and hash out their feelings or hash out uh, previous problems that they've had? Mitchell, go. Um, Brett Favre, maybe? Brett Favre and who? Um, like who interacted with each other and had problems? Who do you want to see sit down and hash out their problems with each other? Honestly, like Brett Favre and Rogers. I mean, I guess they maybe had a little feud back then. Um, I don't know. I don't really care about their problems or anything. It's all about what they say. You know, if it could be, you know, soft bullshit or, you know, it could be something with them really getting into it. I don't know. Who do, who do you, I, that's a hard one to actually think about. Who do you think that still has, you know, feud with each um, with each other right now that that people don't think they really do, you know? I said John Rocker in the city of New York. Yeah, they hated him. Good I want to see John Rocker well, sit down well, with someone in the LGBTQ community, a single mother and a Mexican from the Bronx, because that is exactly who he calls out, took shots at single mothers, gay community, Ethnic slurs, degenerate Mets fans are degenerates. You got a 28 game suspension for them. So I would love to see him and a couple New Yorkers sit down and talk it out. So the thing of New York, what about Pedro Martinez in New York? Pedro Martinez and Don Zimmer? No, in New York. You don't remember uh, towards the end of his career, every time they come up, they chant, Who's your daddy? Yeah. I'd still, I'd still rather see John Rocker sit down and talk to him, especially to see where he is yeah, now. That's, that's a real good one. Last time I seen John Rocker, I think he was on Pros versus Joes. Well, they said that Eastbound and Down was based off of his persona. Kenny Powers was basically John Rocker, extrapolated, you know? I didn't know that. I've never really watched that show. Oh, that's a God. great show. God damn. 
man, you got a lot to talk. You got a lot to do here. Um, Tim, what did you say? Uh, OJ Simpson and the Brown family. Oh, Tim. Nice. Absolutely. Sports related high murder case. Oh, Tim, you nailed it. Yes. I mean, that would be a good one. But since he brought up Brett Favre, I, I do feel like a, a Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, like long form interview since Rodgers is now going through the same thing or a similar thing that Brett Favre went through would actually be pretty interesting to hear. Right. Talk about what he went through, what Rodgers is currently going through. Right. Talking and shit right. about the the front office of the of Green Bay. Right. And, and Rodgers has been pretty candid. I don't know if you've seen too many of his press conferences during training camp, but I, I think they're pretty hilarious. Yeah. He specifically went out of his way not to say he appreciates the organ. Uh, I appreciate the fans. Like he stops to say like, no, I don't appreciate the organization. Well, last year, so he was uh, talking about Jake Crumero and how much he, he enjoyed his connection with him during training camp. And then the Packers cut him and he signed with the Bills. So Rogers was talking the other day about another young guy that he was enjoying it with. And one of the reporters goes, can't wait to see him blossom in Buffalo this year. Oh, and, yeah. and Rogers just started cracking up. Oh man. Shaq and uh, Kobe would be a good one. Obviously you can't really do half of that right now, but they never really sit down and told everybody. I mean, they, they hated each other, man. Right. Kilo and Kobe. That'd be good. Did you guys watch that Kobe documentary last night on ABC? No. I did not know. They were supposed to talk a little bit about that. I forgot to record it. It was supposed to be a big uh, Kobe documentary. They sat down a lot of his former teammates and, you know, former reporters and stuff. And it was like a whole two, three hour thing on Kobe Bryant from the very beginning till the helicopter went down. So Mm. I got to go back and watch that. The last one I thought was Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan. Ooh. Ooh, good one. I just thought of one. Tito Ortiz and Dana White. Ooh, nice. Yes. That would be a good one. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson. Who? Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson? Yeah, NASCAR drivers. Did they fight? Did they get into a scrap? All the time, like 20 times. 20 times? Yeah. Damn. You know that? that On pay-per-view now. They're in their their prime. I I mean, I know UP, you don't really watch NASCAR. I don't know if he watches it. I'll watch it briefly, but those little guys get out of their cars and, you know, you do, you do one little thing, you cut them off or you do something and one of their teammates, they'll go nuts. Oh, those two hated each other. I mean, they're two of the best racers of all time. I'm from Kansas, but I'm not that Kansas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you don't watch NASCAR. All right. So we do this. We're going to do this every week now. We are covering Hard Knocks. Dallas Cowboys. Yesterday was episode two. Tim, takeaways from Hard Knocks episode two. I really like C.D. Lamb, and so do the people on Hard Knocks, because I don't think I've heard Amari Cooper's name once this entire season so far. Yeah, he's been he's been, it was a big focus on this last episode. Yeah, but I enjoy him. He he seems like a good kid. You know, maybe not the smartest kid, but he's just kind of fun to listen. to to how he talks. Yeah. Shoots the shit. The thing that I liked um, is he loves candles and he loves to smell good. And that just reminded me, I love candles. I love candles. We buy a new candle. Anytime one goes out, we'll go out and get a new one, try different pumpkin, apple smells. Candles are highly underrated. Are you a big candle guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, 16 of them in this cabinet in the hallway right here. 16. Wow. Yeah. yeah, Bath and Body Works Fun. yearly sale. Oh, that's the best sale, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, I get the little squirt ones too that go in my little thing in the basement. What are those little ones with the the juice, the liquid? Uh, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I love those things, man. Oh, and those flavors are spot on too. Yeah, he was a, a big fan of flavors. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know the juice, the ones with the flavors. <laughs> Um, the first, first like opening line, how about Zeke? My gooch feels dry. Just talking about his gooch right off the jump. Episode just started a minute and a half in. My gooch is dry. Any spoilers? Well, you should have watched it. I watched the first episode. 
And then he was like, I need baby powder. And the funniest thing is when Lee Schreiber comes in with his voice and he's like, Zeke does need baby powder, but there's not going to be any babies on this field. Like he does his little, <laughs> you know, a double and entendre and it's so the funny. The music voice. starts playing. Yeah. Yeah. But he's like talking about his gooch. He's like, Zeke's gooch will not be dry this season. He's going to have a big bounce back year after last year. Didn't need to be, but it was nice to see Dak back at practice. It was, uh, I liked the little uh, Ben DiNucci part of the episode where they focused on him. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, Dak, yeah, Dak is a very good teammate from at least what they show on the show. He's constantly hyping everyone up and, you know, good job, good job, good job. So that's just, just another... Like he just seems like such a good guy. And I thought was something that was really cool was they were practicing all the quarterbacks cadences in the, in the like film room, like yeah. ready, ready, break. And they would practice that and practice that. So they knew Danucci, this is his cadence. This is Dak's cadence. So they like got, you know, that's just like a little thing you don't even think of, but they practice that because you have to know the cadence. So we know it's on two. We're not jumping. This is what the cadence sounds like. So I thought that was just a cool little, um, detail that i wouldn't have even thought of that goes on at camp you know all right yeah that, that's the best part of hard knocks is you get you get this insight to nfl that you don't know what God, cats are fighting uh but yeah I, fighting. I, 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 yeah i i enjoy hard knocks for that reason alone it's like you, you i feel like i learn something a little bit more about football every year that i mm. watch it how about uh, the coach Aiden Durday, that two-year uh, D-line coach? The one with the English accent? Oh, I love that guy. It's so funny because obviously we're all American, and when you have someone who's English, like automatically just kind of like pick up on words. Like when he said massage, he's like, get your fucking ass in the room and make sure you get a massage. And they're all like, <laughs> like laughing at him. They're like, that say one massage player. one more time. Say massage. Yeah, that one player was trolling them the whole time. Yeah. That was good stuff. I, I really enjoyed Jerry Jones' impression of it too. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, hey, you know, he sounds like you know, Matt Dash. Like, you <laughs> yeah. sound like yourself, Jerry. Right. Yeah. Geriatric Jerry. Some there was some just great slow motion shots, and it just. I mean, you wanted ten minutes. All right, we got ten minutes. Some of these shots were just really like cool you see like the the sweat coming off of their face when the the face masks were hitting little stuff like that even if it's like no context for dialogue or anything it was just very visually cool to see you know yeah and we got more focus on my boy mexican sloth yes yeah him and the other foreigner i guess they uh like belgium maybe yeah they were they were talking at uh after the game after they played uh the rams Right, and it was the Cardinals. They were playing the Cardinals. The Cardinals, yeah. Yeah, and they were talking, and they're like, "No, no, nobody else has ever played international." And you know, he said, "Be brave." And yeah, they're the only ones from out of the country. That was uh, pretty cool, right? Yeah, I also enjoyed him on the sideline. Scored touchdown. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's the plan, pal. <laughs> How long before they start calling him sloth? Uh, if they haven't already, I'm disappointed in their whole team. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of scuffles versus the Rams in practice. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I was going to talk – go ahead. What are you going to do when Aaron Donald's coming at you? Oh, my gosh, yeah. You saw someone was picking a fight with – or threw him to the ground. I think it was – I couldn't see the number. If it was 55. But, geez, why are you trying to scuffle with – yeah, with Aaron Donald? It was nuts. I mean, Aaron Donald could literally do whatever he wanted. They just keep saying everybody in the NFL and they were saying on the sidelines like, man, that's a bad man. That's a bad man. Yeah. I would stay out of his way. Uh, if I was anybody there, uh, are you a big seeds guy, Mitch and Tim? Huge. Cause Zeke is a big seeds guy, I guess. He's constantly, he's like, <laughs> he's like a little gremlin. He's like, I got the seeds. You know, I got the seeds. But he had original. I was surprised. I was like, who gets original sunflower seeds? Oh, I still get original. Really? Yeah. I don't really like the flavored ones. You don't like the flavored ones? They, I don't know. After after a few handfuls of them, I just, I don't know. I'm kind of over it. I just like I the old school. 
I just think they're just so boring and there's just so many other options. You get nacho cheese, pickles, ranch, ranch, barbecue, jalapeno, bunch. Yeah. I mean, they're fine. I'm just, I'm always going to go with original. I guess you and Zeke are like that. I was surprised though. I'm, we both have dry gooches too. So yeah, <laughs> dry gooches. <laughs> Anything else from the episode? I haven't watched it yet. Thanks for the insight. Yeah, we know. Uh, just looking forward to more, you know, like it. an hour is a good amount for an episode, but by the time it's over, I'm like, damn. All right. Got to wait another next one week now. Yeah. I wish it went into the season. I hate how they have to stop and everything. It'd be cool. At least they did. Way. They did one like that. I, I want to say it was on Amazon or something. It was like it was the Cardinals when Bruce Arians was there. And they did they did it throughout the whole season, and it was really cool. That was an older uh, season? Yeah, it was like maybe like 2015, 2016, something like that. Okay. It was when they still had Carson Palmer. Yes. When he came up with that app called IP? I don't remember that. You remember that? No. Carson Palmer and his brother, Jordan Palmer, came up with an app that was called IP or P-Run or something like that, but it gave you a point in a movie where you can go to the bathroom and you won't miss anything. And he like updated you on what happened, like run P something like that. I remember that season. That was like, it's actually, it's actually a really good app. Yeah. And you could just look at the movie, the best time to take a piss and they would just like tell you what happened. But. Is it like that one? Uh, have you ever seen uh, with Catherine Heigl and Seth Rogen knocked up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. On the movie, putting all the movies of all the times in all the movies where the tits are exposed or whatever. Mr. Skin. And they found out it was Mr. Skin. Yeah. Yeah. It's even a better name than that, than us. So I put out on Instagram for some hot takes. I wanted people to give us just some hot takes just for us to cover in the program today. Kanye West album won't drop for another six months. Buying or selling? I buy it. Buying, Mitchell. Buying or selling? I'll buy it. I don't follow it enough to have an opinion. I just wait for people to tell me, "Oh, did you listen to the new album?" And then I'll listen to it. But I just saw he's just doing some weird shit at stadiums and stuff, right? He's like laying down in the middle, and people are just watching him, and he's taking naps. No, he's living at the Falcon Stadium. Oh, he's living there. Yeah. Okay. For an indefinite amount of time. I mean, I mean, I assume they're probably going to want him to move here shortly. Yeah. With the, the yeah, with games coming up and stuff, he's just so bizarre. I just don't even care to follow him. I don't even know if I buy into like the whole he's a genius thing. I just think you could just be kind of weird and yeah, you know. Yeah. I, I imagine though, you go to a game at Falcon Stadium and he just like stumbles out of his room like, oh fuck, I gotta take a shower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then goes to like the locker room to shower. <laughs> the guys come back from halftime. They're like, "What the fuck yeah. is Kanye doing in here?" Yeah, he's just, it's just quiet, and he's just like <laughs> singing. So get your love locked down, <laughs> love locked down. It could be beautiful. Comes out, he's like, "All right, Matt Ryan, I'm gonna pump you up for halftime." Yeah, yeah. So I have no idea, Mitchell. You want to know this one? White Sox win the World Series this year. They also make it there two out of the next five years, buying or selling. Mm. Mitchell. Yeah, are those two questions into one? The White Sox are winning the World Series this year, and they are also going to make it there two times in the next five years. I mean, I don't know if they're going to win it this year. I'll buy it. They make it in the World Series this year and within the next four years just because they're just stacked and young. Everyone's 25 and younger. Yeah. I think I think they may get to the World Series this year. I know the Tampa Bay Rays look good. It'll be a big test this weekend in uh, Florida when they play the Rays, three games set. That'll two be best, this weekend? Yeah, two best teams in the American League. So That could be a, a matchup then that we'll see in the playoffs? Yeah, it would probably be an ALCS matchup. Well, I look forward to that. We'll see. Next one here. Cereal is a soup. Buying or selling? It's clearly not, right? 
No. It's like it's saying just, a hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is not a sandwich, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. No. It's a hot dog. The hot dog. If the cereal was hot, maybe. Your hot milk. There are cold soups, though. Yeah. Posole? Posole? In a Mexico? Gazpacho? Yeah, gazpacho, right? It's a cold Mexican soup. Yeah. Yeah. I got uh, Justin Fields will be the starter for week one. That's already been said. That's not going to happen. So selling that. What but, week do you think he starts? Three. Okay, or until, so if he, if he or, starts week three. Or until they lose. If he starts week three, what are the what, what do you put their odds are for NFC North? Uh, maybe slightly better. Slightly, yeah. I don't know. I think this Green Bay thing is going to blow up. As far as what? Rodgers has got a bad attitude. He knows he's on his way out. Aaron right. Jones already signed a big contract. Devontae Adams is out after this year. Randall Cobb's coming back for a reunion tour. I, I, if Justin Fields starts early and he's everything we've seen so far, it wouldn't shock me if the Bears won that division. Bears still need to block. By the way, dopest Fields jersey I've ever, or shirt I've ever seen, just came in the mail yesterday. We have one minute. Uh, any closing remarks, Mitchell or Tim? I got nothing. I got to watch the uh, new Cowboys episode and. My Soldier Fields shirt is lost in the mail somewhere. Just like lost in the shuffle this episode. All right, guys, we will see you next week, all right? All right. It's Can't been wait. It's been fun. This has been Lost in the Shuffle, sponsored by Sheffield Shuffler.